welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer today. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for joining me. I am a Western astrologer and I factor in uh, the Sabian symbols, what I see clairvoyantly, and tarot into my readings. This is going to be the astro weather uh, for the next week, but because it's the end of the month, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the astrology of September 2022. Where has the year gone? So crazy that we are already approaching the fall here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, we've got a lot going on this month. Um, these are going to be the major transits that we're gonna be taking a look at week by week. So we'll go a little bit deeper um, as we get into some of these transits throughout the next month, and we'll be discussing it on the channel. If you're new, please do, uh, sharing is caring. Please do consider sharing, give us a thumbs up, and also let us know where you're tuning in from. And I just wanna say a big happy birthday to all of the Virgos in September, as well as all of the Libras, because we do have a, um, a change that will be taking place. So the main headlines for this month would be uh, mutable squares, guys. We're gonna see quite a few mutable squares. Um, mutable signs do indicate changes, things kind of transforming in some way, us needing to be a little adaptable. We have also got a Mercury retrograde that's gonna be taking place in the sign of Libra. Now Mercury um, is going to be retrograding from Libra back into Virgo, and I'll touch on that briefly, but I'm anticipating quite a few of us are gonna be hearing from people from the past. And I don't say that because um, Mercury is, is retrograde. It's more because it's happening in the sign of Libra, which is a Venus ruled sign. So it's going to be about reflecting on relationships, what is and is not working. Um, and I'm actually kind of, kind of a fan of it. If you guys haven't already seen my uh, Mercury retrograde video, I talk about all the aspects and what's gonna be happening. We'll touch on that briefly today as well. We're also gonna be seeing some very helpful Earth trines this month, so that's nice as well. We're gonna see lots of trines between planets in Virgo and the North Node and Uranus in Taurus, which is helping us build new structures in our life. Um, and we're gonna be able to problem solve and kind of work our way through that. And last but not least, we're also gonna be having the fall equinox, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the beginning of fall for us. Um, and it's all about finding balance and balancing out the light and the dark. Um, so we'll take a look at that chart as well. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Um, if you like to take notes and stuff for the month ahead, you can make, note of, make notes of these dates. It can be really helpful just planning your month ahead if that makes sense. All right, so uh, the month kicks off on September 1st when Mars in Gemini moves to sextile Jupiter retrograde in Aries. Um, so we've got Mars over here. It is in a positive, harmonious 60 degree sextile to Jupiter. Jupiter is retrograde right now in the sign of Aries. Um, and this is gonna be happening at between, you know, six, six and seven degrees. Let me roll it back a little bit so you can see here. Some of you guys are saying, where are the dates on the screen? Uh, I announced them and then you can see it on the chart. So hopefully you guys can see that. Um, but that, that sextile is really gonna be building from like the 31st on, to be honest with you. When we see Mars in positive aspect to Jupiter, it's almost like the more we're reflecting and going inner um, to our inner kind of personal perspectives, our inner um, uh, hopes and dreams and visions for the future, Jupiter, we're able to have a better direction of what we're actually working on, right? So just recently, Mars has moved into the mutable air sign of Gemini. It's gonna be there clear until next year. Um, so yeah, definitely take a look at where this is happening can just be expansive in terms of um, conversations and, and forward thinking and planning because we do have Mars in a mercurial sign. Um, I, and I also recommend guys, because we will see just a few days later um, that Mars is gonna get into the shadow period for its retrograde, wonderful working time to sit down, have conversations, talk to other people, be planning, um, anything in regards to even like travel, anything like that, like it's it's a positive aspect, even though in spite of the Mercury retrograde shadow, we also see Mars that is going to be in um, some harmonious trines to Mercury. So it's almost like you could really get all the way up until right about the Mercury retrograde and um, you have a lot of support from the cosmos to get things signed, move around, book trips, things like that. Then on the 2nd of September, 
We have uh, Mercury and Libra coming into an opposition with Jupiter retrograde at six degrees. Again, lots of Jupiter stuff going on. A sextile is positive. An opposition can represent two separate sides of a situation. I always liken it to like two planets in a room and they see each other, but they're not interacting. It does, um, oppositions do require us to do both, to kind of stretch what we are feeling capable, especially mentally, of being able to do. And like I said, Mercury is in shadow. Um, it's been in shadow for a couple days now. But Mercury in opposition to Jupiter can manifest as um, positive feedback from other people, you know, people being able to kind of give us some insight and some, some positive, nice or constructive criticism, especially in the sign of Libra. Uh, we may unexpectedly hear from people far away or at a distance. There can also be a sense of us really learning a lot about ourselves through our interactions in relationships. So I'm a fan of the uh, Jupiter-Mercury opposition. I feel also that with the trine to Mars, it's really highlighting um, you know, how we can actively participate in relationships and that through communication, uh, we can really work through anything with the Mercury-Mars trine. Um, and it gives us the opportunity to kind of circle back to ourselves and really reevaluate what our beliefs are, what directions are we going in, what are we capable of. Um, and it's just really great energy to be able to kind of work with other people. Still, and this has been really since that new moon in Virgo, um, we've still been in, you know, sun square Mars energy. To some extent, we're really going to feel it this whole lunar cycle because that new moon that we had in Virgo at four degrees, it is setting the stage for 28 days until we have another new moon. Sun square Mars feels rushed, kind of banged up a little bit, uh, kind of uh, confrontational. Um, I think with the sun in Virgo and Mars in Gemini, it can be um, harsh criticism. It can be, uh, you know, do it better, you know, get, get it, get it right kind of energy. So I would just say, take it easy on yourselves. If you're feeling the pressure from other people to kind of like really show up in a certain way, or if you're holding yourself to like an almost impossible standard, really work with the Mercury retrograde this month. Um, because of its retrograde motion, it's going to drop back into Virgo and it's also going to make trines to Pluto. So we're going to be able to kind of dig down and figure out what's going on clear between now and like mid-October, what we need to clean up or organize. Then on the 3rd of September, we've got Mars um, entering shadow. So um, when I say shadow, this is the degree that when Mars retrogrades, will retrograde back to, okay? So it's eight degrees. Um, pay attention to, you know, what's happening on the 3rd. I, I, I feel, to be honest with you, like, Nah, you, we could be fine all the way up until the time that Mars comes into a trine with Saturn. I'll give you those dates as well. That's later in the month. But um, you may start seeing the effects of the Mars retrograde themes as early as the third. Now, if you're a chart ruled by Mars, if you're an Aries rising, if you're a Scorpio rising, uh, you may notice this a little bit more. Um, just know that wherever Mars is in your chart right now, look for the house of Gemini. This is where you're going to be doing a lot of work. Remember that Mars and Gemini, it's a little scattered. Um, it has many interests. It kind of like flutters around and has different things that it does. It can get easily distracted. We can be juggling more than one thing. And Mars is our passion, our desire. It's what we hope to, um, you know, make happen. It's the energy that we have. It's what gets us out of bed in the morning. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of work in this area of our life for the next several months. And it's possible that when Mars turns retrograde, um, that we lose a little bit of the momentum or there is more frustration or there is more kind of conflict with other people. So don't worry, we're not going to be experiencing the retrograde until closer to the end of October, but um, just know that the, the shadow is there. I've just encouraged my clients and everybody who I've been talking to just to keep an open mind. That's the key with the Mars uh, transit through Gemini. Realize that once it turns retrograde and it comes back to some of these degrees that it's going to be at at the beginning of September, we may pivot, we may choose another path, another person, a different direction. We may feel a little bit more fickle or a little less commitment oriented when it comes to our goals. So really actually, in, even in spite of the shadow, I'm really liking it because I'm, I'm enjoying going into um, Libra season and watching uh, Mars trine Saturn and watching all the trines that we're going to get from Libra. So even though it's shadow, don't worry, just know that we can see more kind of communication breakdown, um, us feeling a little uh, torn with what direction that we want to be going in. Now, technically, the retrograde will begin on October 30th, 2022. And um, that's when, like I said, Mars is going to become more internalized. So we have all the way up until that point to be working through some of this stuff. 
Granted, we're gonna see um, not just a trine to Saturn, but we're also gonna see a square to Neptune. And I feel like that's when things get a little dicey. We're, not, we're maybe overdoing it. We're spreading ourselves a little too thin, taking on too much um, and needing to kind of simplify and kind of scale back a little bit. So uh, yeah, so pay attention to that shadow period, guys. Uh, more on that, if you wanna know about the Mars retrograde, I did a video on Mars entering Gemini. I talked about how it's a part of a several sequence um, of transits where we had eclipses in Gemini, we've had a Venus retrograde, some Mercury retrogrades, and throughout Mars's transit, he is going to be reactivating several of those Gemini eclipses that we've seen over the last several years. So check that out. Um, then we get into the fourth. And on the fourth, we see Venus entering into Virgo. So it leaves the fire sign of Leo. It goes into Virgo here in the evening here on the West Coast, uh, Venus enters into Virgo. So the um, uh, mutable earth sign of Virgo, um, it's much about sacrifice and service and giving. Um, however, Venus doesn't do as well in the sign. Generally, we like to see Venus in like Libra or Taurus or it's exaltation of Pisces. So as it's moving through um, the sign um, of Virgo, we, we may see more challenges with Venus. We might see more challenges in regards to health, um, in regards to feeling like we're getting enough love, we are beautiful enough, all of those things. And we're also gonna see Venus bump into Jupiter. So there's gonna be a lot of like reworking and redefining what it means to be healthy um, and our personal responsibilities for creating healthier habits because um, she has an association with that. I bring this up especially because the North and the South node both being ruled by uh, Venus and Mars, these planets changing signs we really wanna pay attention to all year, okay? So then we've got um, on the 7th, right here, uh, the Sun in Virgo comes into a trine with the North node in Taurus at 15 degrees. So we've got the Sun in Virgo coming into a trine with the North node. Um, sacrifice being worth it, you know, the changes that we're making, the willingness to show up and do the work, to roll up our sleeves, uh, really coming into alignment with the future of our destiny. You know, I thought for a very long time that Virgo season was going to be the season where like we clean everything up, not just because there's connections to that sign, but because there would be trines to the North Node, because we would also see oppositions to Neptune, we're going to start kind of figuring out where our blind spots are. Uh, we're also going to be having a full moon in Pisces, so I think that that's going to be part of it as well. Um, but when the sun is in positive aspect to the North Node, it's almost like actions um, and fate kind of play a role in this time period. Out of 15, it is a Mercury kind of degree. It's a Gemini degree. So it's about sharing information, helping other people, things that we're reading, things that we're learning. Great time, I think, um, from the 17th really all the way through, uh, no, excuse me, the 7th really all the way through the 11th to make changes. And I'll explain why in just a second, but just with that sun trying the North node, it's almost like fate, fateful sacrifices are taking place. That's really allowing us to kind of get back to basics and feel a little bit more stable. Then on the eighth, uh, we've got Mercury stationing. Um, basically Mercury's slowing down, getting ready to go retrograde when a planet is stationing. It's got a lot of power. Um, we might start seeing communication breakdown, you know, glitches, things like that. And being at an eight, it's about how we're changing and transforming the way that we communicate with other people, learning to go into deeper levels of intimacy, exposing our vulnerabilities and being able to better talk about fear. So, um, you know, we can see some travel plans go astray <laughs> a little bit. We can also see that. Um, there is uh, almost like standstills happening in relationships and reevaluations happening in relationships as well. I do think it's going to be a clunky day um, or evening, especially because I'm looking at the moon in Pisces coming into a, a quincunx with Mercury going into the morning and afternoon on the 9th. So kind of difficult to like communicate with other people. Uh, we might be avoiding having certain conversations we might be kind of checking out in a way, especially with that moon square Mars, like we're afraid of having um, conversations with other people in fear that there could be some confrontation or we just notice that things are changing. Um, then we have on the 10th, here we go, the full moon in Pisces. So let me scroll, roll this back a little bit here. 
ahead one day. There we go. We've got a full moon in Pisces that's taking place. Uh, that's going to be at 18 degrees and change. That's what it looked like. Maybe not. Maybe it's me 17. Yeah, okay, sorry. It's going to be 17 degrees and change, so it's going to be 18 degrees-ish. That'll be the Sabian symbol. Um, full moon in Pisces, ruled by Neptune, and the moon is in close proximity to Neptune. It's within a 10 degree orb. Whenever we see a full, a full moon, it's a completion of a process. So you want to think back to things that we've been working on really since about February, March of 2022. We're completing that cycle now. Um, interesting aspects. I mean, the, the moon conjunct Pisces is very spiritual, psychic, intuitive, very dreamy. It's a great day for, you know, meditation work. It's a great day for anything in regards to uh, mysticism, intuition. However, um, it highlights the, the polarity between the sun in Virgo, which is very practical, show up, get it done, you know, make it make sense, get it organized, and the moon in Pisces, which is kind of like dreaming or, you know, uh, painting or hiding out in a, in a room somewhere watching a movie. It's going to highlight that polarity of if we are not showing up, if we aren't adding enough faith, if we um, are self-sabotaging, then there is going to be more conflict. We saw that new moon in Virgo, square Mars. We've got a full moon in Pisces. Once again, square Mars um, and conjunct Neptune. So this is uh, holy mutable squares. <laughs> it's, it's going to continue until we, we get out of um, Pisces season. And even then when, when we, excuse me, Virgo season. And even then when we get into Sag, we're going to see mutable squares happening. So that's going to keep coming up, right? Because we're going to be seeing until the end of this year and into next year, Mars is going to be in the sign of Gemini. Uh, we'll talk more on that, but, you know, there are some other positive aspects. I think the Sun trying Uranus, once again, is um, an excellent time period for change. Like I said, I think it really starts on the 7th and it's going to go all the way through the full moon. Um, that if we want to make a change, if we want to shift something, we can physically and it can be in a much more positive manner. Then on the 11th. We have got, um, yeah, the Sun in Virgo trying Uranus, still factored into the full moon, but you're going to see it exact this day. Let me move ahead a little bit here. And uh, 18 degrees, reactivating that triple conjunction that we saw in Taurus at the end of July, beginning of August. Um, once again, Virgo's Virgo degree, it's about health. I mean, I'm just anticipating we're going to hear a whole new slew of just stuff in the media in regards to new information and trying to make sense and break down and dissect new numbers, new facts and everything in regards to uh, the pandemic from the last two years. I can almost guarantee you that part of what's happening with the square to Mars and Gemini is that there is a change in the way that they're communicating and expressing and talking about um, what they have learned and what they know, right? Either about the the um, the virus in itself, or you know how we could have handled things better. It's hard to say, but there's going to be a change of the narrative with the square that we're seeing between the Sun and Mars. And I think with the Sun trying North Node Uranus, everybody is going to be really focused on like, okay, well, what do we do with this information? How do we use it, right, Virgo? And how are we going back to work or what are we doing um, when it comes to uh, kind of rebuilding our financial systems because it is making aspects to planets in Taurus. So that'll be interesting to watch. Things get a little active then uh, a couple days later on the 16th here. We've got Venus in Virgo square Mars in Gemini at 14 degrees. Um, important because still we've got the North Node Lord Venus, the South Node Lord Mars in friction. Now, I love a good Mars Venus square. I think it's kind of sexy, honestly. It's it's good for um, passion. It's good for creating a little bit of friction, and it can be um, great for just creating sparks and relationships. However, I do think that it is going to bring up some tension because the moon is going to be factored into this as well. So I think like the moon, Mars and Gemini can definitely be some like racy conversations, communication um, and things that are putting the pressure on Venus, who is not entirely too happy being in the sign of Virgo. Um, watch for a little bit of friction that day. Obviously, a little bit of friction isn't necessarily a bad thing, but this makes me feel like people are having um, sudden conversations and they're pressing things um, or there can be lots of talk about um, making changes in relationships or changes in 
uh, kind of being at a fork in the road with financial um, or relationship situations because of that square. Now, this same day, we also see the sun in Virgo coming into opposition with Neptune. Now, you're going to feel that really, you know, the 15th, 16th, 17th. Um, and then we also see Venus in Virgo in a trine to the north node. Just heads up, guys. The 16th is not a day to get pressured into making a sudden de like decision or purchase for financial transaction because something's not clear, right? Mercury is retrograde. Um, we've also got, you know, the sun in opposition to Neptune. So we're not entirely clear of like what could happen. We're like a little, we're a little cautious. And then we've got the moon Mars conjunction in a square to Venus. Not a day to go and buy a car. You're gonna get suckered into something at a car lot. Uh, be careful and be mindful of scams um, and people who are not being completely forthcoming about stuff. There's going to definitely be some narratives that are changing and there could be some push or momentum to like try to get people to like buy into an idea um, that may not be, you know, exactly what, what, what it appears to be. Now, Mercury still going retrograde in Virgo, excuse me, in, in uh, Libra. It's making trines to the moon and Mars as well. So I could see like as Mercury is going retrograde, there is this sense of like, we do hear from people, right? The past does come up. Like retrogrades are review, revisit, rework, uh, re-examine, reconnect. Um, and when it's in a Venus-based sign, you're gonna have more people that are gonna be more reminiscent about the past or thinking about the past. Certainly partners from the past can come back, um, especially true for, you know, if you've got like a, um, an Aries or a Taurus rising. I could see that being the case uh, for some of you guys. Um, the other thing that I would say is, oh, Pisces rising too, it could be any of those signs. Um, the other thing I would say is, is that not everything that comes back during a retrograde is meant to stay, okay? So like we can wrap things up, we can get closure, we can do that, but I'm watching the Mercury retrograde in opposition to Jupiter and Aries, and there can be like a sense of like too little too late or people coming back when they've realized that they screwed up and they wanna make amends and you're like, I'm in a different place now. Jupiter retrograde in Aries is uh, really going deep and really thinking about like your own philosophy, your own belief system, like the, the code that you live by, how you're changing and growing as a person internally and like how you're continuing to really self-explore and find out more about yourself. So I could see this be like a difficult time for some people in relationships that have taken space and then somebody comes back and they're like, actually, you know what? I think I'm pretty good on my own. We may see some of that happening in some relationships throughout this, tr this retrograde. Um, and then with Venus in a trine to the North Node, not terrible. I think Venus trine, uh, the North Node ruled by Venus is positive, but I think really what it's telling me is that this may be a fateful day for just being like, actually, I'm good you know, moon, Mars, conjunct Venus. It's like, no, we've been there. We're not going back there. Uh, there, may, there may be a need to kind of say that, and there can be a little bit of temptation that can be coming this day with whether or not we're gonna take the bait, whether that's picking up the phone, responding to the email, responding to the text, that kind of stuff. Then on the 18th of September, we have got Mercury retrograde in Libra opposed Jupiter retrograde in Aries. Now, this is the second time that it has happened, okay? So remember, this started in on September 2nd. So look back to what happened September 2nd or just make a note September 2nd. Might be some good news. Might hear from someone. Something, you know, may pop up because it's in shadow. So as it's retrograding back, then it comes back into its opposition. Now, you're going to see this when it hits now four degrees and four has to do with family emotions and the past that's why i think we're going to hear a lot of of x relationship type stuff that's going to be coming up um and that'll be the second time that that happens the same day we also have the sun in virgo coming into a trine with pluto and capricorn super powerful great day for um really i think showing our will showing our courage showing our um, true sense of service also and really focusing on our goals when it comes to health, organization, wellness, getting the job done. Um, I think this is a wonderful day on tap, the 18th and the 19th, and there can be some really good news that can come from just getting feedback from other people, honestly. And uh, yeah, I like, a, I like the Sun Trine Pluto because it, it feels like it's getting really solid around the 18th and the 19th, which is really aligning with our, our desires and um, what it is that we need to accomplish and get done. All right, so then on the 19th, 
We have got uh, Venus in Virgo, trine Uranus in Taurus. Now Uranus is retrograde. Um, once again, activating that 18 degree point. What is and what is not healthy? I think uh, radical changes in health, del um, uh, wellness, or diet. Um, anything in regards to also just service. I think we're going to hear quite a bit about the future of health and the health industry, um, the future of anything involving like medications or maybe even mandates. Um, I think because the sun and Venus are in a very analytical sign, we've got Mercury retrograding back, the later that we get into September, the more some of this stuff is going to come out. That's like, hey, we're rethinking this. We're backing, we're backtracking. We're going to back up and we're going to review what we have done and what worked and what didn't. Likely, as much as I hate to say this, a lot of this is actually because Mercury is in opposition to Jupiter and individuals have really been exercising their own personal rights and their own personal freedoms. Jupiter does rule law. And I see uh, Libra being more about judges and actual decisions. So likely we're walking a lot of this stuff back because people have been exercising their legal rights and we're realizing that the next major topic probably in the world is like, okay, so the status has changed. What we thought we knew, we didn't necessarily know. There's new facts and data coming out. So what do we do about people who lost their jobs? What do we do about these people who did not want to comply? And I think we're going to hear a lot about this in the fall and a lot in regards to law and legality for personal rights as well. Um, this next day, a couple days, let's go back. Um, oh, I guess I should say with Venus trying Uranus, it's positive physical changes um, happening in, in regards to love and money. Although uh, Venus being in Virgo makes me feel like it can be like, okay, well that didn't work out or I don't like the way that that works. So now we're making the change. Keep in mind, Mercury's still retrograde, and Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, so we're going to have to wait until uh, we see some planets get into Libra before some of this relationship stuff gets settled out, probably after the Libra new moon is what I'm guessing. Uh, the 22nd is a day to watch. We've got Mercury and Libra conjunct the sun. This is going to be the Kazemi. And let me bring this up here. So um, this is when we have Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun. So Mercury, the messenger, bringing some kind of information back. It's um, highlighting something, showing us what the Mercury retrograde was about, what we needed to reevaluate. It's happening in zero degrees of Libra. So that's going to be a world access point. And um, it's also going to be really significant for the fall equinox. You know, so having a Kazemi in itself just means look out for unexpected conversations, epiphanies, information that comes out of the blue, comes out of the ethers. Sometimes we have a download, we have a bright idea. Sometimes something comes to us in meditation or maybe a book that we've been looking for or somebody who shows up into our life and gives us a message because it is in Libra, so it could involve other people. Um, but very significant considering the fact that this is going to be factored in very significantly to the, um, to the equinox chart. So let me take this back here to the moment that the sun goes to zero degrees. So right here. Okay. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to move the ascendant around. I'm just going to leave it at zero degrees Aries, but um, basically this is going to be the fall equinox uh, here in the Northern hemisphere. And this is going to be the beginning of fall for us. But the reason why I like looking at the equinox and the solstice charts is it's going to give us an idea of what we're actually dealing with for the better part of the next three months, or at least for this next quarter. Now, um, the world access points, zero Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, these deal with world visibility. Okay. So it's about having some kind of exposure or something that's like, you know, major in terms of world events. For Mercury to be turning retrograde and in a Kazemi with the sun, at that degree, my eyes get very big. It tells me that it's gonna be a very significant rest of the Mercury retrograde because Mercury has to come back over that degree. We're also gonna have a new moon that's going to be around two degrees of Libra and it is going to be conjunct that degree. But that tells me in, in all Libra things, arts, relationships, partnerships, counselors, um, anything in regards to law and legality and uh, returning back to conversations that involve relationships possibly from the past or re-evaluating, you know, what we really love and sorting and sifting through things. Wowzers. It's going to be a really interesting next three months ahead, guys. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. 
um, especially being that it is in a balsamic phase. So we've got the uh, moon that's in, um, it's in uh, the late degrees of Leo coming into Virgo and then it'll be a new moon. So it's wrapping things up, it's closing things out. So it feels like a lot of people are gonna be closing out relationships, you know, tossing people left and right and being like, I'm good here, I'm done. Um, we've also got the moon that's technically by sign uh, in an opposition to Saturn um, within, you know, with, within that, that 10 degree range. Uh, of an exact opposition. So moon opposed Saturn is that separation, the having the conversations of like, hey, I gotta go my own way. You know, I can't emotionally relate. This isn't working for me. And the moon being in a solar sign in this phase tells me that there's just like a lot of realizations about what one actually really needs for happiness um, and fulfillment and that it may need to actually break away and separate from things that might be more limiting or doesn't actually feel like it's a part of like the bigger plan. So um, pay attention to what's happening around this day. I'm very curious to see what happens because I'm anticipating possibly either on this day or when Mercury comes back to um, zero degrees that there can be some like worldwide information that's released that's very significant, especially relating to either law, legality, the arts perhaps maybe. Um, that could be something else that we could be looking at as well. All right, so then we've got on the 23rd, let's see here, and I'll come back. We'll, we'll touch on the solstice chart a little bit more, but interesting, interesting chart nevertheless. On the 23rd, we've got uh, Mercury returns back into Virgo, so it's going to drop back into its exaltation. Um, and the next couple of days get really interesting. <laughs> Because after it drops back into Virgo, then on the 24th, we have got um, Mercury retrograde coming into an opposition with Neptune again. Um, so you're going to start feeling that. It won't be exact, but you're going to start feeling that. And also Venus has been in opposition to Neptune. So that's really happening the 23rd and the 24th. Venus opposed Neptune is like where is my love or where did they go or why did they vanish or you know can i can i trust this is this a scam be careful another day to be really mindful with transactions and anything of that nature on the 23rd the 24th uh, we start seeing that opposition um, still kind of in place mercury's back in the sign of virgo and I'm looking at this conjunction between the moon, Venus, and Mercury retrograde. It can be very powerful because of the trine to Pluto that because all of these placements are 12th house to the sun in uh, Libra, there is some huge like clearing that's going on energetically or karmically, uh, releasing anxiety, releasing mental stress, releasing any hangups or anything from relationships, really prominent dreams perhaps maybe even that's happening as well. Then we move to the 25th. We have the new moon that's going to be in Libra. It will be at two degrees of Libra. So still pretty close to that Kazemi point. So something is still kind of playing out there. Um, new moon factored, uh, or I guess ruled by uh, Venus and Venus is behind the sun in Virgo still. And Venus is coming into a trine with Pluto. Pretty, pretty, nice positive earthly trine. She's moving out of her opposition with Neptune, so things are becoming more clear, they're becoming more structured and more stable, really deep and devoted and uh, willing to do the work necessary to be able to overcome any issues, I think in relationships. So it's like, yay, new moon in Libra, we can start kind of sorting some things out and like really clearing out the past or kind of clearing the air in some capacity. The next day, on the 26th, uh, we've got Mercury coming back into a trine with Pluto. Um, so this is going to be the very, this is the third trine actually. So just looking at my notes here, the last couple times we had these trines, it looks like the very first time that Mercury trine Pluto was August 22nd. Okay, and this is going to be um, the second one. So you wanna take a look at what was happening at the tail end of August. Uh, what you're returning and working through. Great for problem solving, digging deep, research, uncovering information. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, 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 I think, significant because of the trying to Pluto, because we're, we're able to find things that were like hidden and they were in the dark um, that we could not see before. Um, on the same day also, we have got Mercury that has been retrograde 
and in conjunction to Venus. So that's really interesting. 26 degrees, uh, you know, these are two um, planets that, you know, Mercury is retrograding, uh, coming back to conjunction with Mercury. It's like really hearing from the past, you know, people hearing from past coworkers, hearing from past relationships, um, reviewing our health, reviewing information relating to health. And with the trying to Pluto, I think this is when the narrative shift is about to appear um, out in the world that we may not have known as much about the virus or the pandemic as we thought we did and some reworking in regards to future planning for um, health and wellness because a retrograde means to review. So it's reviewing something related to health. Trying Pluto and Capricorn is about um, those who are in power and I could imagine like lots of things also moving around, money moving around, things that are going to be moving around as a result of financial changes that are going on in the world. Uh, let's see. So now we've got um, also the sun is in opposition to Jupiter this day at a three. So we've seen a number of oppositions to Jupiter, right? We've seen Mercury oppose a couple times. Now uh, we've got the sun in opposition. Pretty lucky day. Um, if if I could, I mean, you know, sun opposed Jupiter makes me feel like even if something kind of goes a little bit haywire, it's like you trip and fall into like a positive situation. You can't really go wrong with that day. We look a little bit for being cautious with over optimism, but I think with uh, the moon trying Saturn, there's a lot of stability here and lots of opportunities to kind of show it better in relationships and also find more balance, right? That's that's really what the, the um, equinox is going to be about. It's finding that equal balance between the night and the day, the light and the dark. Um, so we're really balancing relationships and we're finding that the more that we're reflecting on what it is that we know we need to do or our beliefs, the better we can show up and we can uh, be partners for other people. All right, so then on the 27th here, we've got Mercury retrograde trying Pluto at 26 degrees, and that has been happening. It'll be earlier in the day. It's the third time. Um, so this will be the third time that this has happened. So you want to go back in time and look at the 22nd of August. You also want to be looking at uh the other trine that we had i don't know it was earlier in the month i've got so many notes here <laughs> sorry guys let me see uh oh the september 24th period okay and what else do i have for my notes 27th we've also got a grand trine setting up in the sky um mars getting to that point where it's trining saturn so even though it's in shadow, the Mars trine Saturn is actually really wonderful. And then you've got the moon in Libra. So this is a day for putting action and motivation and your desire um, in alignment with Saturn, which is basically laying the foundation and like setting the cement to be able to make things happen. Even in spite of the Mercury retrograde and also a slight Mars square Mercury, I think this is a really great working day with all of these air trines to communicate and be able to better work with other people. Um, I think this is a day where we might uncover what we really are most passionate about, what we need to return to, and what we need to close the door on. Uh, let's see. So then we've got on the 29th, uh, Venus enters Libra. So, you know, while the sun is in Libra, we're looking at Venus, right? So if we go back here a little bit. From the second that the sun enters Libra, we're looking at Venus, but Venus is in opposition to Neptune. So it's a little lost, it's confused, it's idealizing something or putting someone on a pedestal or possibly buying into something that may not be a good idea. My advice is, is if you're a Libra based chart, so if you're um, a Taurus rising or if you're a Libra rising, I would advise you don't make any big financial moves, don't make any big aesthetic changes, anything like that. Let's wait until uh, Venus gets into Libra, where she's going to be a little bit more comfortable um, starting on the 29th. And from the 29th on, we've got both the Sun and also um, Venus in Libra. Now, this is going to be dipping into um, a little bit into next, you know, next month. But, you know, Mars is going to continue to kind of be in range of a trine to Saturn really for, you know, the better part of like until maybe the third or the fourth of October. Um, even in spite of that, the astrology in October is, is pretty decent because we see the Mercury retrograde end on the first 
And then we also see that the sun and Venus are going to start coming into trines with Saturn in Aquarius mid-month, and then trines also with Mars. So yes, Mercury retrograde, right? Venus in opposition to Neptune. It's like, what do I love? What do I need? Are we communicating? Where did they go? But it's got a pretty decent uh, turnaround right around the mid-October period because it looks to me like communication really can help us clear through anything, being honest and direct and authentic, not falling into the traps of you know, Mars square Neptune, where we're being deceptive or we're kind of uh, splitting our, our lives or our energies in two separate ways and like being scattered. I think the key with this um, Mars and Gemini is building up to the trine of just having an idea of what direction we're going in and making sure that um, we're really working with that, that trine to Saturn to be able to, to solidify some of our goals or some of our plans get it in writing, have the meetings, all of those things. Because once we get to the end of October and Mars turns retrograde, it's gonna slow down, it's gonna lose momentum, it's gonna be in a square to Neptune, so it's gonna kind of have a loss of direction, it's gonna be a little disoriented. Um, and we're also going to see just anything Mars related, our passion, our, our sex lives for some people, um, our ability to uh, communicate without you know getting our feathers ruffled, Mars retrogrades does um, not only slow things down, but it does create more friction and it does create more conflict. So I would advise you guys up until um, really, you know, the end of September, even in spite of the shadow, really look at um, where Gemini and where um, Aquarius is in your chart because it, that those air trines are really reinforcing the fact that we need to really be sharing ideas and talking about what we're doing. We might be busier, there might be more errands, there might be more meetings, more phone calls, things like that. Um, but it's, it's going to be some of the best transits we're going to have before we get to the end of October because between eclipses that we're going to have then and also the Mars retrograde, the energy is going to be very different. We're going to feel very sluggish. It's going to be really hard to get through some of the stuff that's going to be happening later in the fall. So the next month is a great opportunity to be, you know, really touching base and gaining a lot of clarity, but also learning a lot about those oppositions to Jupiter and Aries and where it does take a little bit of uh, soul searching to really kind of figure out what, what our belief systems are and what we're willing to fight for, or what we're willing to take action in, in our own lives. Um, so I'll be back. We'll do more about this as the weeks go on. Just wanted to give you guys just like a brief forecast and take you through some of the most important transits for the month of September. Um, let me know, like, what are you guys anticipating? What are you excited for? Uh, what do you guys think is going to be that Sun Mercury Kazemi? I'm very curious with it being at zero degrees of Libra. I, I have a very strong feeling that it may take um, until Mercury returns back to that degree at the end of the retrograde cycle here, right around October 11th, that it's fully revealed. So maybe there's information that's being suppressed and then it's gonna come out. Maybe there's gonna be changes in the legal system, changes in the courts, something like that's possibly gonna be happening with that Mercury retrograde. Uh, but let me know, what do you guys think? Uh, it'd be nice to hear from you. Just some um, insight on this next week. I've got horoscopes for the month of September that's gonna be coming out this week. I'm gonna take it through all the 12 rising signs, talk about the most important transits just to be aware of. Definitely be talking about the Mercury retrograde in that. So if you're questioning how that's gonna affect you, stay tuned. Um, if you guys like my podcast or if you haven't seen my podcast, check it out. I have a podcast with The Peace Dealer, my partner in crime. Uh, we do the Midheaven podcast. We have a new video that comes out on YouTube every Monday. Uh, you can go and check it out. I have it linked to my YouTube channel. I also have uh, courses for sale. So if you like my astrology style, if you wanna learn beginner's astrology with me, check out my website. My links are below. You can sign up and study at your own pace. Um, I think it's like you know seven or eight different lectures, over 18 hours of lectures with homework and all kinds of stuff for beginner's astrology. And I also uh, now have my brand new Tarot 101 course. So if you wanna learn the art of intuitive tarot reading, you can pick that up in my website store as well. Now, if you'd like to book a reading with me, I'd love to chat with you. I've got some openings now in October. Um, if you click my website below, you can go to beyondtheveiltarot.com. It'll take you to my website, click book a reading, and you can see my, um, my offerings for all the different types of readings that I have. Solar returns, we have progressions, we can do relationship sinistry, we can do uh, just basic full or half hour sessions live with me on Zoom. I'd love to chat with you. And if you want to get a reading and you want to do it on YouTube live, join me this Saturday. I'm going to be back. We're going to be doing live tarot readings at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific 
time, 10 p.m. Eastern. We're here every other week. You can come hang out with us on a Saturday night, get a reading, you can watch, you can donate, or you can join my memberships. It's one of the ways that you can support this channel. If you like my content and if you like listening to it and you wanna support me, um, completely doing this on my, on my free time, really been working hard this last year to grow the channel. We finally hit 7,000 subscribers, pretty cool considering a little bit over a year ago we had only 1,000, so uh, we're definitely seeing a lot of traction. I just wanna say thank you to all of you who have been commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing. I really appreciate it, and I will see all of you guys soon. Have a very happy month of September.